wires that had held us tight are cut and we draw it pretty roughly. Oh, well, we're still alive. Y yeah, somehow. Like usual, the curse disappears, but wondering how much long- but wondering how much longer this is going to keep happening makes me depressed. I forgot it error on that. I look at the floor of the screaming author fell to the ground, but it had disappeared. Now there's just a pool of blood in its place, and some ash. You'll learn more about Little Miss Ami if you use blood metro on this, correct? Try it quickly now. Yeah. Getting close to the pool of blood. I slowly press my fingertips against it. I see Ami trapped in the place that seems to be the bathroom. It's the same scene as before. It's now two weeks since Ami disappeared. I'd been worried about her health, but inside the vision it doesn't look like Ami's any different than she was when she was taken. I want to get out. How long do I have to stay in here? Mom, big brother. Ami groans in a tearful voice with her head drooped down. You hear a high-pitched sound like two hard objects rubbing against each other next to Ami. Ami's entire body lurches up as she was just hit with an electric shock. Ami, I came to play with you! Kukuya appears and gently pets Ami's head. At the same time, a doll arm under her sleeve tightly grips Ami's body. Almost as if it was intended to be seen by anyone watching this vision. Ami, have you gotten used to Kakuryo? Ami seems to be refusing to raise her head to answer Kakuya's question. Kakuryo is a different world. You used to live in Yutsushio. Here you won't get up here or get old. You just keep on playing with Kakuya right here until Kakuya gets bored. If you get bored, will you take me back? No, I won't. I'll break you. Kakuya doesn't like chatting because you reveal secrets. Huh? What did I tell? Who did I tell? Kakuya must be upset with me saying something about NG. But Ami would know that I know, but she doesn't know that I'm watching her like this. But you can't relax. I will break you until I get bored. Ami, what do you want to play today? Tag, hide and seek, word games, house, or... Ami. Seems like you saw her. What did you see? From what Kakuya said, it sounds like Ami is trapped in a place called Kakuryo. Kakuryo? She must be talking about that Kakuryo. What, you know something about it? Just the dictionary meaning of it. Kakuryo is, is also called Tokuyo. It's a Shinto term for their view of the world. It's what they call the realm of the dead. Put more simply, it's the afterlife. The world of the living where we are is Utsuyushio. I cannot be certain that the Kakuryo she was talking to is the one I'm referring to. That's not what I'm interested in. How do I get to Kakuryo? Unfortunately, I don't know either. Obviously, Bon would, won't have the slightest inkling. First, we need us to ascertain what Kakuya means by Kakuryo. I now know that Ami is in Kakuryo. Unfortunately, I don't know what or where that is. Am I really powerless to stop help her? I know what- I know what- I know that you're in a hurry to say Ami, Kate. But we can't do that right now. Let us take a little step forward that we can. Why don't we open that chest? That's what we came here for. No, it's not. That just became a side thing. I put the key in the lock and lift the lid of the chest. I saw a small, ugly shaped doll and a thick envelope. What? I felt completely compelled to scoop up the doll. It's an odd design of the girl's head on top of the stringy body. The face has a similar hairstyle and hair color. It does a very good job at looking like Kakuya. Why is the doll with Kakuya's face here? Huh, so this is what Kakuya looks like. You know, she's quite adorable looking. She doesn't look like the evil creature we know. Why is this in Moroku's house? Don't ask me. What the hell should I know? The dark dolls remind me of the doll of the girl's spirits in them that we found. I wonder if there's some sort of bloody source related to this doll too. 
I couldn't help but think this doll was important, so I shove it into my pocket. And now the envelope, please. I open the envelope at Rosé's request. Could it scratch paper with detailed description of things and some photos of girls? It's a memo left behind by Yakumo Mur Miroku. It looks like he wrote about the girls he killed. But even with this, we still can't figure out why Miroku did such a horrible thing. And those photos are. And the photos see girls dancing on the stage wearing a white ballet outfit. A ballet recital. Oh, that's right, the victims went missing when she... When she was coming home from the ballet practice. She was. I recall the appearance of Screaming Author. Turned into... That. But the Screaming Author actually didn't want us to see. It was probably... I see. That's why she came up she came, she came up to us here. Because it was painful for her to see us to compare, to compare her with her former self. Sure, we'll go with that. We leave the burnt, burnt smelling attic, all of us full of dreary feelings. <sighs> Took you long enough. As much as I want to scoop, Troll's about to start. We should get the hell out of here now. Let's meet at the Black Rabbit, and I'll tell you about what happened at the bar. <laughs> Sounds good. We managed to survive after all. It's time to celebrate our victory tonight over a good drink. I part with the other two and head to the station. Because I rode the train, I managed to reach Kisoji Station earlier than they do. I find not Aunt Natsumi in the Black Rabbit. She turns to me looking unhappy. Something about she's not her usual friendly self. Perfect timing. I was about to call you. What up? A detective was just here. A lady named Oe. You know her, right? Oe. Yeah, I remember her. That tall lady, right? Miss Oe is helping me with Ami's case. She's told me a lot. Like that you've been out late at night recently. I guess that lady did went out and ran her mouth to my Aunt Natsumi. Is this her way of trying to pressure me because I was being uncooperative with her? You're doing something dangerous, aren't you? I can tell from those scratches on your arms. I look down at my arms and realize I've got a number of scratches on them. I must have gotten them when I was being swung around by the screaming author. You're doing this for Ami, aren't you? You're looking for some girl in a kimono, right? Miss Oi told me what you said when you talked to the police. After Ami suddenly vanished from the bathroom, you met a girl in a kimono. And the girl said she kidnapped Ami, right? Yeah, that's right. So, it's just like Miss Oe said. The other police I talked to didn't tell me anything about that. Probably because it sounds so absurd. But why didn't you tell me yourself? Isn't it obvious? I didn't think you'd believe me either. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have taken you seriously. But I haven't heard anything else these past two weeks. At this point, your story about her being spirited away is my best lead. Evelyn, you'll tell me, right? She looks at me with a burning determination, the desperation of a mother who's lost her child, the persistence to find that child. I can't keep hiding it from her. Okay, I'll tell you everything. Give me a few minutes, I've got some people who are helping me. If they help me explain it, it'll make everything a bit easier to believe. Eventually, Bon and Rosé arrive at the bar. After formally introducing Aunt Nasumi to them, we start talk to talk about everything that's happened. We tell her about Kakuya, her investigation, spirits, Kakuya's game. I'm unsure how I should explain something, Bon or Rosé helps me out. Anasumi listened quietly until the very end, never interrupting. So that's what happened. She seems shocked. That's not unexpected. I've actually faced a number of spirits now, and I still wonder if it's all just some nightmare. I understand that you don't believe our story, but every bit of it is true. Your daughter was kidnapped by this Kakuya doll, and we and Kid are pursuing it. I don't want you to get your hopes up for no reason, but at least your daughter's still alive. According to Kade, people don't get hungry in the realm of the dead. Realm of the dead. Kakuryo. She repeats those words to herself quietly. Natsumi, if there's anything at all that makes a connection for you, let us know. We need all the information we can get. Right. I don't remember it very well, but I think Moroku once wrote a story about the realm of the dead. Oh, Yakumo and Moroku again, huh? This guy seems to have quite a few connections to Kakuya. Could it all be a more co mere coincidence? How fascinating. When I hear Miroku's name, I remember all the disgusting grotesque things I saw that night. The corpse with the girl's arms sewed onto it. That was because of Yakumo Miroku and the children's author who murdered little girls. He acts out of insanity and the girls scream. Screams are all recorded on those tapes. Wait. Hey, Anasumi, I want to ask you something. Was Miroku, was Miroku a pedophile? What? Her eyes go wide at an unexpected question, but I press her again. Maybe I went out wrong. Was Moroku a piece of crap who got off on tormenting kids? 
From what I know about him, he didn't have any hobbies like that. I never heard Satomi mention it either. He was obsessed she was obsessed with him. Huh. I'm sure he hid his guilty pleasures so that nobody else would find out. But the Naroku sound and all that tape still bothers me. I can't believe someone who spoke so calmly could do something so depraved. Hey kid, what's bothering you? You can't explain what we saw here there without concluding that the guy was insane. Yeah, I know, but something bugging me. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't figure out how to put it into words. Anyway, I got a request for you, Miss Manager. Could you look at that book of Moroku's that referenced the Realm of the Dead? Just in case, you know? Yes, I'll do my best. Bon, Rose, I'm putting Ami's fate in your hands. Aunt Natsumi shudders and breaks down in tears. We will let you down, Miss. We'll find your daughter. As a reward, I'd like a bottle of Blood Red Grand Cru. Tufflin. I'm so sorry I'm putting you in danger, but there's somebody else I can turn to now. Please, save all me. Damn straight I'm gonna. Thanks. The next thing I know is already past midnight. We say goodbye to Aunt Natsumi and leave the bar. Alright, I'm getting out of here. I got a table I need to be at. Mahjong again? All you ever do is get sharked, so why do you keep falling for it? Are you some kind of thin dumb masochist? Just because I lost yesterday doesn't mean that I'll lose today. Each match is just the luck of draw, and the draw is going to be in my favor this time. <laughs> that sounds like something I'd find in the pamphlet about the gambling addiction. You're quite cautious when it comes to your work, but you're completely reckless with your money. Hey Kate, if you see Kukui again, let me know right away. If you try and hide anything from me, I won't let you hear the end of it. Bond disappeared toward the kitchen gates. People like him make me wonder if humanity is really nothing but hopeless fools. But I suppose that being so dodgedly flawed is admirable in its own strange way. You like him? I have no idea what you're trying to say. Uh, fine, I suppose I should have expected that from you. Why don't we switch topics to something that would be more interesting to someone your age? Come on, Kate, let's go on a date. What? I'd rather just get some sleep. That's the worst response you can give a lady. As your teacher, apparently I need to instruct you in regard as well as the supernatural. First off, where do you want to go? Knowing you is not going to be any place normal like a park or a coffee shop. Oh, are you interested now? Then I'll tell you. The Moroku residence. Oh, we're going back. I go back to the Moroku residence with Rosé. The way I ask Rosé repeatedly why we're going there. But all I get is the same lame reply like just to take care of some business. I guess I'll see when we get there myself. Why do you- why do we gotta do this now? I don't like walking around during the day. I'm a creature of the night. I rise with the setting sun and sleep with the rising of the sun. That sounds like it'd be bad for your health. When your job involves the supernatural, that type of schedule is surprisingly convenient. Even magicians tend to have more performances at night. Besides, do you really think daytime suits me? I imagine Rosé walking around town in a dress with sun shining brightly everywhere. Yeah, I guess not. Precisely. I'm glad you see the error of your ways. Now then, let's head inside. So where are we going here? We're not messing with the corpse, are we? That is certainly an object of interest. Our business is in the attic. We pass through their hidden hallway and climb up the old rickety wooden ladder. We're back in the attic again. I can still faintly detect a burnt stench. That's what I'm interested in. Rosé walks up to the mirror. For a while, she runs her fingers across it and tries rubbing it, but then she comes straight back to me. Guess I got my hopes up for nothing. I thought the mirror was a sacred object. What's that? Think of it as a special item that holds hidden spiritual powers. I collect such objects. That was why, actually why I had my eyes on Miroku residence in the first place, but... So that's why you asked Bond to investigate Maroku? Yeah. Pretty much. I've heard the Moroku family had something like that, and it fits since they're such an old family. Sadly, the mirror is just an antique. It looks like it used to have spiritual power, but for some reason it's lost now. I guess there was no point in dragging you out here to carry it. You brought me here just to be your delivery boy? That's not the only reason I brought you here. I want to ask you something. How do I look to you? What kind of question is that? Come on, be honest. Spoken like a true young man. Well then, I have my answer. Let's get going. Was there a point to that question? Yes, it was very important. To me, at least. Anyway, we're done with this moldy place. Let's get out of here, Cade. 
I shine the flashlight down at our feet as we make our way to the ladder. The blood stain on the floor emerges from the darkness as the light catches it. What an achingly beautiful shade of scarlet. By the time we reached the station, the last train had already left. I've got no other choice, so I get a taxi to take me back home. Of course, I have Rosé cover the fare. When I close the front door, I feel all the energy drain out of me and let out a big sigh. This long day is finally over. Club who I shut my eyes. Those tortures that took place at the Moroku residence. The four murdered girls was the killer himself. Yakumo Miroku turned up dead too. What the hell was going on in that mansion? I don't know the answer to that yet. Will we find out soon? My thoughts run away from me and before I know it the sky's bright out. I really should get some sleep. That is where we're gonna stop, because I think we did good. So, oh, thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with my horrible voice acting, because I just don't have the energy or the will or the power, the desire or the ability. See you guys.